Dr. White, showing you People's 241, which now um, expands the time frame to about uh, 10 minutes. So this chart showing 1139 to 1149, uh, again rising to just above 4 micrograms per milliliter. Um, do you recognize what's depicted there as taken from the model Dr. Ornelas created? Yes, it appears to be similar, drawn in a similar fashion, but with somewhat a different time, it has a different time axis on the x-axis. And when did Michael Jackson's circulation stop? Well, it would be suggested that it would have, st would have stopped when the rapid bolus was injected, essentially when a peak level um, was administered. So it was immediate? It could have been an arrhythmia. It could have been. It's unclear. I'd just be speculating on the cause. But okay. it's shortly, um, but very shortly your, after. Okay. For, for your model to work, uh, it has to happen shortly thereafter or in order to, because it quickly, uh, the blood levels drop quickly from the 2.6 found in the femoral vein, correct? unless the circulation stops. And again, you, you refer to it as my model, and again, I prefer to give credit to the person who actually did the modeling. Now, you've reviewed the autopsy report in your evaluation, right? Yes, I did, some time ago. And you noted, I assume, that uh, Mr. Jackson uh, had, a, had a strong heart, uh, no known pr heart problems, anything of that nature, correct? I don't know what you mean by a strong heart. It's not a medical term I'm familiar with. I'll, I'll just give you the exact language. Your Honor, I have a, the, from the coroner's report, the um, findings of the cardiovascular system. May this be marked People's 242 for identification? Yes. This is taken straight from the coroner's report, uh, Dr. White. And I'll, I'll bring you up a copy for your review. Looking at people's 242. Could you read that to yourself, Dr. White? And tell me when you've completed. Finished. Okay. And is there any indication in the coroner's findings uh, that there's any problem with the heart of Michael Jackson? No, there's not. But now that you does know not also, you, you're aware, of Dr. White. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the rest. No, there's not. I was just going to add that. There was no structural abnormality observed, but that doesn't preclude an arrhythmia. Now, you're aware that Dr. Murray uh, specifically said that after leaving Michael Jackson for two minutes, he came back into the room, uh, and he looked at the pulse oximeter right away, and his heart rate was like 122 beats. You're aware of that? Yes. I think what he said was he saw a number on the pulse oximeter, and this portable pulse oximeter, and that is unclear given the, sir, I don't know that there was a saturation value, and sometimes the Well, let me just show you the actual transcript. You want to have a, okay. a copy of the, uh, the statement I just referenced, and it's actually, I believe it's on page 63 of the previously admitted transcript. I mean, this one page. Do we need to submark individual parts? We uh, have yeah, the it's just the one summary statement. Well, we have the transcript. I don't want to keep on marking subparts. So you've got the transcript itself. Make reference to that, please. What, what exhibit number? Take a moment. And then just give us the page of the exhibit. <clears throat> it's P-242. 
People's 198 is the exhibit, Your Honor. Thank you. I'm referring to uh, page 63 of People's 198, the bottom. Can you see that, Dr. White? Yes, I can. Okay. Do you see where, uh, actually, Dr. Murray is quite specific uh, that I checked and I looked at the pulse oximeter right away and his heart rate was like 122 beats. Does that refresh your memory? Well, I remember the comment that he, I believe, said in his um, interview that he felt a thready pulse and it was... I'm asking about this comment. Do you... You see where Dr. Yes. Murray says he looked at the pulse oximeter and his heart rate was like 122 beats? Yes, sir. Okay. That would mean he has a, a heartbeat, correct? Without feeling the pulse and knowing that there was a perfusing pulse, I'm, I'm not sure I agree with that. Can I go to the next page of People's 198, Your Honor? Uh, that's page 64. Do you see this, Dr. White, where Conrad Murray says, so I immediately, I felt for a pulse, and I was able to get a thready pulse in the femoral region. Correct? That's what Dr. Murray reported. So I 24 and 25. Thank you. 64. Page 64 lines 24 and 25. So he not only checked the pulse oximeter and saw 122 beats, but he then felt the femoral region and felt a thready pulse. Correct? He reported feeling a thready pulse, correct? And that would suggest that uh, his heart was beating, right? Well, it might suggest that, or alternatively, it might suggest that Dr. Murray was simply feeling his own pulse since it was very weak and thready, and in these kind of situations... Uh, so is this one... You don't believe uh, Conrad Murray when he says... He felt a, pull, a thready pulse in the femoral region? Um, I did not believe it was perfusing. He may have felt some... Um, he said he felt a thready pulse in the femoral region. Are you uh, disputing that? I'm just merely suggesting that clinicians can be deceived into feeling their own pulse when they're under stress and in this type of situation. And it's my feeling that he may not have actually been feeling a pulse that was perfusing, that is, was moving blood around the body. Because if you felt a pulse, uh, it doesn't match up with your new theory that Michael Jackson died instantly upon receiving this 25 milligram self-administration, correct? It's not whether it corresponds or correlates with a theory or a suggestion, it's what happens clinically in these kind of situations. Would you agree that the primary cause of Michael Jackson's death uh, is that he stopped breathing? I don't see any evidence of that. Do you see any evidence that contradicts that? I don't see evidence that contradicts either a respiratory or a cardiac event or a combined cardiorespiratory event following the rapid administration of propofol to a Are patient. You, I'm sorry to a patient who also had extremely high levels of lorazepam. Well, in your March 8, 2011 letter, you do reference uh, respiratory issues as being a potential or presumed cause of death, correct? Again, the article isn't before me, but I think it says cardiorespiratory is what I recall saying. Okay, is that... And that was a preliminary letter that I prepared for the defense attorney, Mr. Flanagan. And you called it uh, likely cardiopulmonary arrest. The central nervous system depressant effects of this combination of medications can produce significant ventilatory depressant effects as well as upper airway obstruction. That's what you said in your letter to Mr. Flanagan, correct? Yes, that's cardiorespiratory event is what I suggested. Right as a likely cause because I couldn't distinguish between whether 
it was cardio or respiratory based on the information that I was provided. But what you specifically explain is possible respiratory depressant and upper airway obstruction, right? That's, of course, a possibility. Patients who That's have... That's what you put in your letter, correct? Among other things, yes, sir. Among other things, including the theory that Michael Jackson drank propofol. Right? Among the theory that he could have taken propofol. Did Which not. you now reject. Now that I have more data and more evidence, I can say that was um, extremely unlikely. In fact, I don't believe it was uh, uh, a contributing factor. Yeah. May I have one moment to retrieve defense exhibits, Your Honor? Please. Simulations, Dr. White. Now, in this simulation that you testified about, uh, and this is defense quadruple N, um, you're aware that the what the stomach contents showed of uh, this this deals with free lorazepam, correct? The the free lorazepam that would be expected to be in the stomach at around noontime, yes. Okay. Is and in defense quadruple N, uh, you're aware that the defense called Mike Henson is standing. He's already testified that the amount of free lorazepam was 0 .006 milligrams in the stomach. Can you tell me where that point zero zero one three number comes from? I would have to ask Dr. Ornelas, I believe um, you understand what was found in the stomachs was 0 .006 milligrams based on the defense witness, Mike Henson. 0 0.006, so it was much higher. Because that was Point higher, higher than what she assumed. Okay, where did this number come from? I would have to ask Dr. Ornelas. It's actually lower, you're correct. It's lower than what was actually found. So you don't know where this 0 .0013 came from? Um, I, I actually don't know. It could have been uh, glucuronic conjugated. I'm not sure. But so you came in and testified this lorazepam model based on numbers uh, from which you don't know where they came. Well, it's is it's that a, correct? It's a very very small amount of free lorazepam found in the stomach. But as I testified, even a small amount of free lorazepam would suggest oral administration. And the fact that it's higher than what was used in this model um, is only more confirmatory evidence in that regard. But you're right. I didn't make the model. I would have to consult with Dr. Ornelas. So as you sit here today, you have no idea where that 0 .0013 milligram number came from, correct? I would have to look at the tox reports and uh, consult with Dr. Ornelas. As you sit here today, right now, you have no idea where that 0 